Hello and welcome to the show supported by Media Proxy. Now, if you caught the Kit Plus News Roundup this week, you'd have seen today's guests with a quick overview of their latest news. Yes, for the first time in 2022, we're welcoming back a well-known face on the show to expand on these headlines. So big welcome to Bryce Button from AJA. Hi, Bryce. Good to see you. Hey, gentlemen. Great to see you guys too. Uh, always wonderful to be back on the show. So thank you for having us today to talk about our new announcements. So Bryce, as we saw in the news, you've been pretty busy. And I think the first thing we should chat about is the release of your first new product for 2022, the IOX3, a mobile Thunderbolt 3 IO device. Tell us more about this. Yes, indeed. It's uh, great to be launching a brand new device here early in 2022. Um, and this is the IOX3, as you mentioned. It's a brand new Thunderbolt 3 enabled uh, IO box. Uh, the IOX3 will, in shape and form, feel very familiar to our previous users of the IOXT, although there's a lot that's changed under the hood. So, uh, in essence, it's uh, Thunderbolt 3 enabled, meaning it'll work with all the nice new Macs that have been coming out and HP machines, etc., that support Thunderbolt 3. Uh, it's got four bi directional um, 3G SDI ports, meaning that you can capture. Um, HD and 2K, uh, all the way up to 60p, uh, including HDR and all that wonderful bit, you know, uh, bit depth when it comes to color. Um, and we have a great new feature in terms of the ability with the supporting desktop software 16.2 to actually utilize the HDMI out and show all four sources that might be coming in simultaneously on an HDMI display. And this is going to be really great for folks that are utilizing the IOX3 for their streaming workflows. So whether that's with VMAX, um, OBS Studio, uh, Telestream, etc. Uh, you're also going to find that it supports a great range of LUTs now in terms of the ability to deal with cube support. There's also a great feature allowing up to 30p for 12-bit, uh, which is again helpful for people that are doing sort of high-end work projects that require for 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 color 12-bit rgb paths etc um, the box also supports up to 16 channels of sdi uh, if you bring in audio over and combined with um, aga control room which is part of our desktop software that we'll talk about in a minute uh, the ability to utilize h264 uh, files for both capture and play out with AJ's free software control room. Really nice device, a very familiar form factor, the ability to utilize analog audio with your mixers, etc. cetera. Um, I think folks are really gonna like uh, the, the new IOX3. So you'll wanna you know, visit the website and dig in further there to see how it can uh, fit into your workflows. But for the predominant HD with HDR uh, support going on in most of the industry at the moment, um, you're going to find this a really flexible and affordable solution. So, and alongside this, you've you've uh, developed the desktop version 6.2 software, which provides desktop software support for all Kona and I/O products. So, what features are going to be? What we're we going to get excited about with this? Indeed, Matt. Thanks uh, for bringing that up. So, the desktop software is almost as important to release as the hardware. Here, it's uh, one of our most powerful packages in a very long time. It's desktop uh, software 16.2. It includes support for all the latest uh, Mac OS, Windows, uh, and of course Linux systems when it comes to the operating platforms. It also includes support for all the M1 uh, chip variations that are currently on the market from Apple, meaning all your new um, MacBook Pros, whether you're using the uh, Max chip, etc., cetera, uh, will already be well supported with this software. There's a lot of great additions in terms of capabilities. One is, for instance, a great new firmware package for the Kona 5, a uh, high-end desktop I.O. card, including a 12-bit file um, support process, which will allow you to capture 12-bit RGB 444 color with BT2020 space, uh, all the way through you know, capture, playback, output as desired. Uh, so that's really going to help a lot of the virtual production workflows that are going on, uh, as well as virtual studio work across the board and is essentially going to be extremely helpful for narrative episodic pieces, uh, whereby 
our users are trying to get you know the most out of that look and ensure that they can support all their HDR workflows, etc. Of course, it also has support for the new, you know new iOS three. It includes things like new LUT support when it comes to the control panel, and this is Cube support, which makes it a lot easier to work with packages that are producing LUTs. You know, creating your own LUTs, taking them through. It's a very common format for lookup tables, and it's going to be extremely helpful. Combined with um, HA Control Room, which is our free software, part of the desktop software package, you're even going to be able to play H.264 files now and play them out. Um, you can pick these up from your nonlinear editors. Uh, all, all the packages out there, including Resolve, uh, are supported for playback there and, and capture, which is wonderful in terms of smoothing out workflows for a lot of different pipelines. Um, New LUT support, and what I mean by that is we now have cube support for your lookup tables, making it a lot easier to bring in lookup tables from software packages, load them into the control panel, play them out if you're creating your own, away you go. Um, you have the ability to work with uh, a range of streaming applications now, uh, including OBS Studio, which is a new addition, and we'll talk about that a bit more when it comes to the SDK support. Uh, but essentially what you're able to do with a box like iOX3 mentioned earlier is you can have multiple streams coming into that software. You can even monitor them all at the same time. If you've got an uh, affordable HDMI display you're plugging into, uh, and you can use that software to do your switching for your live streams. Um, so we really think we're making this package extremely flexible, and uh, I really do encourage your users to download the latest version uh, here for the most compatibility when it comes to your operating systems, when it comes to your software packages, and you know making uh, use of all these high-end workflows that are now available, essentially in a completely free software package. So tell us now about um, your new partnerships with OBS Studio and I guess what OBS users can look forward to now. Yeah, indeed, Simon. Um, so OBS is very popular streaming software for those that don't know about it. Uh, it's got thousands and thousands and thousands of users. Uh, and one of the great things is it can handle uh, multiple in incoming streams. So, you know, like we mentioned with iOX3, where you've got four inputs that might be HD inputs, uh, you can utilize the new OBS Studio uh, software and work in conjunction with a card like uh, the iOX3 or a device like iOX3, but you can use it with Kona 5 and other cards of ours as well. Um, you're able to basically do some really great sophisticated live streaming where you're switching between the sources, you're adding graphic layers, all that kind of thing uh, in a platform that's readily available to tons of users. So joining what we've previously done with vMix and partners like uh, Telestream with Wirecast, etc. So this really expands the software pool uh, that's available for simple and powerful you know, streaming out. So uh, it's been great working with them. And uh, yeah, a lot of that is based upon the fact that we've always had a very powerful SDK and they've indeed been able to take uh, advantage of our new open source SDK. So can you share some more details about what this means for the larger OEM community? Maybe even what this means for the just generally the, the manufacturing in broadcast? Yeah, uh, so it's pretty damn exciting at this point in time to be able to share with you that we've taken our really famous and well-respected software development kit, uh, which has always been a proprietary item, and you know developers can sign on to that program. They get a lot of support. Uh, they have the ability to utilize hardware during testing phases and various things like that, and actually bring a version of it uh, missing some of the completely proprietary things that we need to hang on to for, for that heavier OEM work to the open source community. Uh, and this is in fact what was utilized by OBS in terms of creating their new version of OBS Studio. So it has a big impact because like most things open source, it means that AJ is contributing uh, to the world software development here. 
by giving over all our key components and making it simpler for many smaller developers, especially who've had great ideas, who are excited about our equipment and wanting to use a lot, utilize it sorry, in uh, their particular solution packages. So you're going to be able to go to aj.com, simply take a look at our developer page, and from there you'll find the links to the GitHub um, repositories. And you can utilize the software completely freely um, and you know, try and put out your really exciting ideas without any cost. Obviously, if you need more sophisticated support and the rest, uh, then we'd encourage you to sign up for our full developer program. And with that, of course, there's a slight cost, but you're getting AJ support and the ability to deal with our engineers directly. But in terms of expanding the usage of our products across the market, and for many developers that like to experiment and try, nothing stops you from bumping up from the open source version, of course, further down the road if you find you really want to utilize some of the highest end features that AJ makes available. But this is going to be really great for the developer community. Uh, I think uh, it's wonderful that we can be contributing to this open source universe and making sure that all of us enable solutions that really work for a wide range of needs. And if it's going to be anything like it's been with our standard OEM base, we know that's uh, a lot of industries, categories, and solutions uh, that people are able to creatively explore and come up with for their particular workflow needs. And we, we really hope uh, our users enjoy this. So we've been hearing a lot about shows this year, uh, things hopefully starting to get back to normal. Will we be seeing AJA at the major shows this year? NAB, I guess, is coming up in April. Ah, trade shows. So the reality for us, uh, as the year goes, we're, we're basically treating these things and applying our decision making based upon you know, the realities that everyone still faces. Uh, whether that's travel restrictions, whether it's uh, COVID outbreaks, whether it's uh, the ability to move uh, from one place to another for a lot of our partners and or attendees. And so we're kind of taking it uh, uh, conservatively to a certain degree. In other words, we will be at certain shows, not necessarily others. We have to be cognizant of what the uh, realities are on the ground. Um, and uh, the truth is, all vendors this year are still facing a huge amount of supply chain issues. Uh, and, you know, what, and what makes sense and what are you trying to achieve with each uh, particular event? Uh, like many companies, we'll be pursuing um, sort of hybrid experiences where a certain amount of our activities will occur online and a certain amount in person uh, where it makes most sense. So. When it comes to each show, uh, over time, uh, we'll be letting our channel know and our users know what the scope is of our involvement with a particular show. Um, but I do think people are thirsting to spend more time around each other again. Uh, it's always nice to be able to see a bit of equipment in the flesh. And uh, we will do our best to do what makes the most sense uh, for each particular time period and each particular location. We, you know, we can't pretend that the entire planet has moved along at the same pace, and therefore we will have to apply, obviously, subjective and objective um, decision-making based upon the particular show, its location, and uh, what the realities are that we all need to face at the time. So before we go, are we gonna also, in 2022, shows or no shows, see any new products from you, what are we, what's coming up? What's on the horizon? Some good stuff. Well, Matt, as you know, we uh, never fully broadcast our roadmaps in advance, um, so I'm not going to tell you particular products at particular times or anything like that. But I think when it comes to AJA and all the themes that we've been exploring for the last while, including things like HDR, you know. And by the way, over the last uh, week here, we just did release a new version of Mini Config software. And so for any of our users, especially who are utilizing our HDMI to SDI or SDI to HDMI converters, including Hi-Fi 4K Plus or Hi-Fi uh, 12G, for instance, uh, a lot of these mini converters have been augmented, uh, especially around HDR workflows and things like Dolby Digital Audio. Um, 
with some great new features, the ability to take uh, what's coming from either the SDI or HDMI source and convert them, whether it's uh, over SDI VPID uh, metadata uh, or taking an HDMI source with its metadata and, and making sure it stays clean automatically into an SDI feed. Um, so it'll do all that for you, as well as give you the ability to override, because on occasion you want to make some particular tweaks, especially if you're working on set, that kind of thing. Uh, and also some great new uh, audio support in the Dolby side in terms of pass-through uh, with Dolby Digital Plus, Dolby Digital, and even uh, Atmos, uh, uh, sorry, Atmos uh, Audio. Um, so that's great for, you know, people needing to transfer the surround sound capabilities in its clean form, uh, as well as a couple of other enhancements that work across like our 12 GM uh, with dual link support and that type of thing for effectively um, making sure that you can handle different types of connectivity if you happen to be utilizing 3G SDI. Uh, even though it's a 12G SDI capable box. So um, great great amount of new features there. I think as you might be able to predict, uh, we'll keep augmenting our great new gateway products, whether that's the Bridge NDI 3G, uh, the Bridge Live. These are really essential products uh, when you're trying to centralize and work remotely uh, to feed out to remote um, with the ability to add new features and so on these boxes certainly give us great platforms to keep building on. Streaming is going to continue to be really important and you can expect a couple of new items in that arena. Uh, but yeah, we'll continue to keep exploring. Uh, there are many different ways to skin the IP cat, for instance, and uh, as brutal as that may sound. And uh, we'll be sure to be there with uh, various options available as well. So, you know, the key thing to do there is just keep watching AJA.com. Look for our announcements on social media or follow our RSS feeds off of the website. Uh, the numerous ways to keep in touch with what AJ is up to here. Thank you, Bryce. Always good to get an update. And of course, do check out AJA.com for all the information that Bryce has been talking about. Thank you very much to Media Proxy for their support of Kit Plus TV. And thank you for watching. Don't forget, you can listen to all the Kit Plus interviews on our podcast. Just search for Kit Plus in your podcast directory or head over to kitplus.com forward slash podcast. We'll see you next time.